Well, this morning we begin a new series for the estimated 12 million Americans who suffer from food allergies. Joining us this morning, Lori Sandler, whose son Benjamin, who's here with her, has severe nut allergies. So she taught herself to create food without nuts, and she founded the allergy-free bakery, Divi's. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. So, Benjamin, what's it like to live with allergies? Because it's not only nuts that you're allergic to, right? Yeah, I am also allergic to um, milk, which I am outgrowing. Um, sesame seeds, shellfish, and um, tree nuts. Um, well, what I do is I don't let food allergies define me, and I'm just a normal boy. I play sports. I went away at camp, and I'm just a normal boy with food allergies. I love that, and it's, it helps that your mom has made this her life's work to kind of help people who do have allergies. We're going to be making some brownies. A lot of people yes. think, well, you can just make brownies without wallets and they don't have nuts. But the thing about food allergies is there's so much cross-contamination, isn't there? Exactly. Um, whenever you're buying a product or making a product, you want to make sure that all of the ingredients are safe, for the, especially for the person who has the food allergies. So you want to be really vigilant about reading every ingredient, knowing the manufacturer that's producing the product that you're buying and giving to the person who has the food allergy. So if you had to give, I know that you have four basic tips you like to give people yes. with allergies. What are they? Well, the first thing is I'd like everybody to know that it is so important to read and reread your um, ingredient list. You right. can never be careful. Right, because sometimes it says this was produced in a factory that also processes nuts, exactly. for example. Exactly. And okay. that brings us to the second tip, which is to really know what cross-contamination means. And cross-contamination means that all it takes is a microscopic amount mm -hmm. of an ingredient ingredient that somebody is allergic to to cross contaminate with the ingredient that you think you're getting. The next thing is that you want to always be prepared and have your medication with you just mm -hmm. in case there's an accident. And then finally, I think it's great if everybody can teach people that they're closest to about their food allergies and about learning how to read ingredients and what to do in case that accident should happen. Okay, of course we want to prevent that from happening in the first place, so let's teach people okay. how to make these nut-free brownies. You okay. want to help, Benjamin? Sure. I know you've probably done it a ton of times. Okay, um, this is a delicious recipe, and basically we start with dry ingredients, which are flour, I'll get that. cocoa powder, and all the amounts are going to be on your website. Okay, perfect. Um, salt, kosher salt, now where, we see all these ingredients, where in a typical brownie recipe might you find hidden traces of nuts? Um, in a typical, it's really not the recipe itself, it's usually the I ingredients. Mean the, I meant the ingredients, the, yeah. So what was the question? Where in the these ingredients would you typically find nuts? Um, in the cocoa powder mm. and in the chocolate chips. Mm, I would never think that. Okay. So then um, here on this side we're going to do the wet ingredients and we're going to have sugar, this is um, sour cream, and depending on your allergy, you can use regular sour cream or you can also use a dairy-free dairy -free. Okay. sour cream, which is what we use because of Benjamin's allergies. Corn syrup, applesauce. Oh, yummy. What does the applesauce do? Um, it's a binder and it keep, makes them a little extra moist. And here's a secret ingredient, vinegar. Why vinegar? White vinegar, because it gives it um, leavening. Oh. It leavens it canola oil, and vanilla. Okay, and then you're gonna add chocolate chips to this recipe too. Now these yes. came from your bakery? They did. Which you process you in a very sense? clean environment and you're careful not to cross-contaminate. Are there lots of companies that do this now in this country? Um, more companies are starting to do this. It is difficult to find chocolate that mm. it's um, made in a dedicated facility where there are no nuts or dairy. And that's why um, we, actually Benjamin inspired us to start a bakery for um, people who have just this need. That's great, Benjamin. So you mix this all together and you put it in the oven for how long yep. before it looks like this? Um, it depends on if you want them chewy or cakey. Ah. It could be anywhere from 35 minutes to about 50 minutes. Um, we like ours, a little combination like of both. I like the corner, so I gotta see. There you go. Mmm, absolutely delicious. <laughs> now I have food in my mouth when I'm okay. thanking you. Sorry, Lori and Benjamin, thank you. You are so welcome. We're also going to teach you how to make nut-free breadcrumbs. You can go to the web to look for that recipe and all the others. Also tips on how to find nut-free ingredients in the store. It's on earlyshow.cbsnews.com.